Hello and welcome to this beginner tutorial for Ventus. If you want to follow along, you can download the scene from the description below. This is what we are going to make. A fancy looking menu with some buttons that are opening panels and the video will be played. Also we are adding a small particle effect in the background and a wavy water effect. So let's start with a new scene. The first thing we are going to need is a 2D layer with a gradient. Drop that thing on top so it's rendered in the background and get into the color settings. For the first color choose a purple. And for the second color choose a blue. Get that slider slightly to the left till you get that semi-horizon line there in the middle of the screen. Perfect. Onto the 3D layer, which we will rename and call background. Now get in there by pressing the small pencil. And now we can open our repository under View, Repository, Project, Menu Repository. This is the place where you store your pre-made buttons or images or logics that you also can use in other projects. In there you'll find a container called Sun. Just drop it in and there we go. On to the palm trees. Get an axis node, a solid color node and a rectangle node. We are using solid color nodes most of the time because we don't want the general scene lighting to interact with our objects. Now in the color node Drop in a new material stage, hit texture, base plus alpha, and double click the checkerboard and load in the palm tree silhouette PNG. Now we can adjust it, scale it up a bit and get it into position. And now we need to copy it. Just Control, drag and drop it in and there you have your copy and now flip it on the Y axis for minus 180 degrees. We can't see it yet. This is because of the culling. So we have to tell the renderer that he should render every face. So we're dropping in a culling node and under culling say back faces none. So we can see both of them. Now arrange this one. Just scale it up a bit and pull it over to the side. And there we go. Now we want to mirror it. For this we need to group it first. So grab a group node, drop it in front of everything. And now we are right click and drag, you get that white triangle. Release, say link here. Click once and there you have your linked copy. Drop an axis in front. Because we want to flip it and on the y-axis say minus one. Again a culling problem that we can fix with a culling node. Drop it in before and under culling say none again. Now we can position it. Now we want some effects on it so grab an fx node, drop it in between and under the resolution we are saying quarter resolution because this FX node is pretty performance heavy and you won't see it on a blurred surface so we can downscale it a bit. Drop in a new effect, choose glare and under show choose blurred mask. Now get the aspect a bit higher so we get that fuzzy breakdown on the edges and a little bit of gain and also we can downsample the quality of it because nobody will notice it. For the second effect we are choosing a 2D displacement under the loader and if you have a look in there you find the liquid normal map. And if you pull up the strength Y you can see we get this nice little wavy effect. Click that button on the right and say triangle 1. Right click it so you get the sub menu and get the max value down to 0.1 and the duration up a bit so it doesn't move that fast. Okay, nice. Some chill little wave sitting is. Now we need a particle system. Just get one in there, drop it on top and under modules choose a grid and a sprite. And in the grid properties get the size of Y and X all the way up.
get the count a bit higher for both x and y and the jitter for x and y to 1. Now drop an axis node in front of the particle system so we can position it better. Get it to the top and get back into the particle system so we can adjust the size a bit more. Perfect. So we are done with the background. Let's get in a new 3D layer with standard and call this one menu and get in there again. Now open your repository and in there you will find a folder which is called buttons where I pre-made some of these buttons. Just drop them in as before. Okay, so as you may see, these containers are on interfacing mode. Interfacing means that these containers can be updated easily if we change something in the first one, so we don't have to change every single container. But to be able to have different geometries, like these slightly different circles, in there we need to expose certain parameters. This will keep the interfacing away from updating those properties. So what we don't want to change is the tessellation of those circles, and the general x and y position. To keep the container a bit cleaner in terms of parameters displayed, we will put these values together in a value float node and expose the value of it. So now we don't get the several properties that are named exactly the same, which if not done like this can screw around with your objects inside the container if updating. So get all your three circles in there via shift and clicking and grab a value float node. Now bind the tessellation segment to the value float node and get in the value float node and expose the value parameter. You can do this by clicking the small button on the left. Also we want the x and y position to be exposed, so it doesn't get changed when we update. Now we can update every other button. Just left click and drag the first container over the other ones and right click above the other containers. As you see, all have now the same exposed parameters and we can adjust the position for every button. And if we update now, you will see they will stay in position. Great. So let's get the buttons a menu bar where they can fit in. For this, grab an axis node, drop it on top, a solid color node again, and a rectangle. In the color node, grab a new material stage, texture, base, and choose a gradient. There are two options to change this gradient. If you right click the first one, you can see the options vertical. This is the easy way you could choose it, but I'm choosing the 2D mapping option and UV0. There you can do it by hand. This might be coming handy later if you want to adjust it and don't want a straight 90 degrees value and under rotation in Z you just type in 90. Nice. Now this gradient is from left to right. Let's scale it up and position it a bit. And let's change the color for the gradient. The first color gets a dark purple and the second color gets a dark blue. Now merge this into a container and call this one menu bar. Get in there via middle, middle mouse button and copy it via control drag. Change the color in the second one, just make them a bit brighter. and adjust the scaling a bit, so it looks a bit fancier. OK, 
Okay, let's scale it up a bit so all our buttons can fit in there. And grab all of the buttons at once and change the Y position and the X position. Now the buttons are sticking in there, but we can easily fix that by getting into our menu bar. And we are pulling up the Z position for it, so it gets behind the buttons. Let's fix those values so the buttons are looking the way I wanted it to. Just change it to 2, 3 and 4. Nice. Some nice looking buttons there. Now let's get into the actual animation that we want to achieve when we click the button. Let's get an animation node and get into the animate layout so we can see better what we are doing when we are hitting the keyframes and get all the axis nodes from the rectangles and the circles in there by shift clicking it in and mark all of them and bind the scaling factor all to the animation. Get into the timeline view and change it to one second, drop a keyframe and drop another keyframe. So what we want is that the small grid starts on zero and ends with a one and the button gets a bit bigger so the user has a bit more of visual feedback. Let's have a look. Perfect. Let's set some states. Just hit S and S again and get into the state logic. There you see your two states and now on the bottom right side you see methods. Just click it and add a new method called activated and a second method called deactivated. Now you can drag and drop them in. So S1 to S2 is activated and S2 to S1 is deactivated. So to the logic, get a touch button and drop it in front because we want it to be touch interactive. Now get an event node and bind the invoke property to the touch button and hit single tap. So now if we touch the button it invokes or rather starts the event. What we now need to do is telling the event which button he is actually in. For this we are using a container info node. This info node holds the information of which button or rather container he is in right now. You will find it under the name index. This will only work if your container has an actual number in it. This name index we can use now to tell the event which container he is in. Bind the argument property from the event node with the container info and hit name index. What now happens is, when we press the button, the event will fire and give us the argument of the container info out, in this case 1. What we also need is a boolean expression. And we will change the arguments for it. First one we are naming my ID. Second one, active ID. And also change the expression for it to my ID if equal to active ID. Now we can bind the my ID property to the container info. We also need to expose the active ID argument to be able to use it later on and expose the fired output property of the event node. Let's bind those previously made methods from the animation to the expression. For active, say true, and for deactivated, say false. Okay, let's get outside of the container and update all those other buttons. To be able to see if this is working, we need to bind an event node to the containers first. So grab all of them, get an event node in there and bind the active ID property that we previously exposed to the event node. And bind the invoke of the event to the container.
If we press those buttons now, you can see that under the fired property, there's always the corresponding number displayed. Because what happens inside is, we tap the event, it gets fired and sends out the argument. This hits the boolean expression, which then triggers the animation. But also the expression will stop every incoming argument that isn't his ID. So we can press different buttons later on and deactivate the other ones, which will close the video panels that we are now going to make. Get an access node. A solid color node and a rectangle. And let's merge this to a container again. You could also hit Ctrl M for this and rename the container to panel 1. Get inside and inside the solid color node, get a new material stage, texture base, and in the loader under texture property. Say movie clip. Let's get in the logic view so we can see better what we are doing. And let's position this panel. For the scaling, say 16 to 9, so we get the right ratio for the video and roughly position it. If we scale this now, you see the scales to the outer ward edges. But what would be cooler is if it scales to the right upper corner. We can change this by getting into the properties from the rectangle. For a line X say right and for a line Y say top. So if we scale it now it scales from the upper, upper right corner which is perfect. So let's position it. and expose the X and Y position because we will need some more panels and we don't want to change them all from the position if we update them. Get the container on interfacing mode and copy this panel three times. Now we can position those panels. Just get them slightly to the right. And get inside the first container. Now let's make the actual animation for the panel. For this, just bind the scaling all factor to the animation again and get into the animation view. Go into the timeline and change the duration to one second. Get a keyframe in front. And a keyframe right here. And for the start, we want the panel to be on zero, and then it gets to its normal size. Set two states again, and inside the state logic view, get the same two methods as before active and deactivated. Find the rules to the states. And now let's get the logic inside the panels, which will be pretty much the same to the one we did before, with the small difference that we are now using the container info to distribute some video files later on. First node we are needing is the event node. And the boolean expression. And also an array indexer node with one string property. This node will help us getting the video files to the right panel later on. Now as before bind the argument property to the container info and expose the fired property. For the indexer, expose the array property and bind the start property also to the container info. For the movie clip node, we are binding the file property to the indexer. So it knows where it gets its video files from. One problem we have to solve is that this indexer counts from 0 onwards. But we have no button 0, so we need to tell the node to count from 1 upwards. To do this, get a float expression and drop it right onto the existing binding. Now just change the expression to 
a minus 1. Let's get the animation methods binded with the Boolean expression as before. Change the arguments to my ID and active ID, and the expression again to my ID if equal to active ID. Expose the active ID. One last thing before this logic is finished. We need to animate some properties from the movie clip file. Bind the enable, seek, play, and pause to the animation. Get back into the timeline view and change the view to 30 frames so we can fine tune a bit better. Drop a keyframe right here. And for the beginning, disable the enable property. Change the position for the pause and play keyframe to there and there. Now double click the keyframe till this little triangle points to the right. For the pause get it into the other direction. And for the seek to the right again. Perfect, we are done with this logic now. Go outside of the container and update all the other panels. Now bind the active IDs from the panels to the event node. The only thing left is the videos. For this get a directory node. Which needs a path to the videos that we want to use. You can just copy the path from the explorer and drop it in. As you see the count is still zero. This is because we need to change the search pattern too. Because at the moment it looks for JPEGs, but we want it to look for MP4s. So change that and now you see the count is 4. Lastly bind the array property from the panels to the directory and hit result array. Great, this is done now. Let's check if everything is working. Sometimes animation can get stuck in the progress. To reset all of them at once, just get into a new scene and switch back. Now let's test our menu. Nice, everything is working. This is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. There's more to come soon. Have a nice day.